Hello everyone, it is Christine here and I am back to work on my Dictionary of Stitches which was a project started last year and which ran across 171 videos where we worked our way through the A to Z of embroidery stitches and I had the most lovely community that joined me in for the live viewings um, each evening, well evening my time, often early morning in other parts of the world, um, or who joined in after the videos and, and stitched along, or even the, just those that came along to connect and to chat. So an amazing community um, built up around this little stitch along project. And so I'm really um, keen to kind of get the, get the project completed as a lovely record, as a lovely keepsake of those beautiful friendships that developed. And I've had a few people asking, oh, have you put together a video showing how you're putting your dictionary of stitches together? And no, I have not. So it's well overdue. And thanks to those that have asked and prompted. Um, and I thought, yeah, you might be interested because it will also be a great way to learn about how to put together one way to put together a fabric book using a hardcover um, book cover if you want to although you could apply the same techniques and put a soft cover on it as well so for my book i'm going to use this old 1960s reader's digest um, cover i've um, gutted the book because it was already falling apart um, but the cover's rather lovely i like this little it almost does look like a stitching design um, and I like that it's got complete book of and I'm thinking I'll make it complete book of stitches and then I'll have dictionary of stitches on the front and I'll probably do a fabric cover. Um, I might even just leave that little bit cut out um, and then have a fabric cover for the rest of it. But that's something we can come back to in another in another episode. So let me just make sure I'm on screen. Yes. So inside the book, um, it's now just got the back cover. I've left in um, this one, the Ex Libris. And I do want to do a special dedication to my Nana and Grandpa at the front um, of this. So I'll do a fabric, extra fabric page for that. So it may well be actually, it'll probably come over here and be a fabric page in there. And so then I've got all of my um, Dictionary of Stitches stitched pieces, um, including where I've done um, the little index pages with the letter. Um, I've still got a whole bunch of those that I'll actually have to do in addition um, to starting to put this together, but I can at least show you how it's all going to fit in. I've put in places where I'm either going to do full page ones or, or small ones, but I thought you might want to just see how I'm constructing it. Then we'll do a flip through of all of the stitches because it's actually really lovely to now see them in their entirety. I haven't done that one of those sort of flip throughs before we were just working on each one individually. So what I've got is four signatures. So three large signatures and one slightly smaller one for the back. I probably could have distributed them all evenly. I'm not too, too fussed to have one that's a little bit smaller at the back. And I'm thinking that I will stitch these into a little um, fabric spine um, that can then um, either be a floating spine or can be stuck into here. Now I can work that out towards, towards the end. Um, and so each signature, let me check again that I am on camera. Actually, I'll just move this to the side for a moment so we can take a look at one of the signatures. Let's find the middle. So that's our middle page. And so with our larger signatures, we've got one, two, three, four, essentially eight double pages. But let me show how show you how I'm constructing them. What I'm using is old sheet. It's beautiful and thin and beautiful and soft. Um, they eventually became sort of yeah worn through and got a hole in them. And so what I did was tore strips. Um, I made one strip myself to start, which was my guide strip. And then I always um, put, the, put the cut into the sheet against that guide, um, that guide piece. Um, if you don't use a guide piece and just keep sort of using the next one, you'll gradually find that it increases in size because you're always going to get that little bit bigger. So you just want to use a single template um, as your guide. You could even create yourself a little cardboard template 
and then after that um, I ironed them. Originally I just ironed them in a whole lot of, I worked out what size I wanted a single sheet to be and then basically folded them over. What I've decided to make this step easier rather than having them in a huge essentially accordion style is I've gone down then just to um, sections that have four sheets essentially in them and folding in the two middle ones um, and then they become the back-to-back -back pages. So then putting one of these four sheets folded in um, and then that's how each of the each of the sheets in the signature are. Each of them are a, a set of four folded in with the next one put on top. So I'll just show you that again. So that's a set of four sheets that forms our base. And then the next one that goes down is a, another set of four, four sheets. And then the next one that goes down, another, oops, catching them. Another set of four sheets. And then finally our fourth set of four sheets. And again, I'm never worried if they're not exactly even. That one's just sticking out a bit because um, it slipped down. And this one I haven't stuck in it yet. Um, so that's how one, two, three, and then as I mentioned, my last one is a lesser number. I think it's just two. Yeah, it's just two. If I thought I was going to want to add more in, I could always add more into this um, signature, but I think I'm going to be happy with it just um, finishing there, partially because I don't want the book to get too, too thick. Um, I think it's already going to be um, a decent amount of thickness. I think it will still be okay because that's now with everything um, in it apart from the title um, one. So I'll have to just do those nice and nice and flat where I'm going to be adding those in. Um, but I think I think that will be pretty okay and I could even have a little clasp um, that goes over it. I've even got some um, little buckles and belts that used to go on a picnic set so maybe even one of those could could go over it but I'll, it's probably something I'll keep near my desk as inspiration that I can can flip through so what I've done is got each of my pieces I put them in alphabetical um, order there might be the odd one where it just fitted better to have it slightly out of alphabetical order so I'm not too fussed about that um, and then I've gone through and just used YooHoo glue, which is my preferred glue to use with fabric. One, it's very affordable, but two, it doesn't give you a crunchy crunchiness. It actually just feels like fabric, but it gives enough of an adherence that it will stay down while you stitch it. But it's not so hard stuck that you can't actually um, unpeel it if you really wanted to. And you can also wash it wash it away as well. I've just recently been using YooHoo glue to do some resist dyeing, which I shared in another video, which is just um, fabulous, fabulous fun. Let me see if I've got, sorry, I'm just leaning down. So this is some fabulous um, leaf resist dyeing that I've done using YooHoo and Inktense blocks. Um, so I'll try and remember to include a link to that as well. So we'll take a look through in a moment what I'm planning to do in terms of um, stitching these down because they are just held with Yoohoo glue is probably just using a pretty invisible um, white thread and just doing some either some a little running stitch around or just some little tacking stitches over um, the margins of the piece to hold it in place. And if I think it needs any others on the body of the piece, um, but really at this stage it's just to hold them hold them to the pages and the plan then once I've finished stitching everything down on a double sided page um, is to also do some stitching around the edge as well to hold that in place. Again I'll be able to think about whether I want to do that in a particular colour but I'm thinking because the pages to me are just yeah lovely to look at and to just be able to really focus on the stitches, I'm thinking I'll keep it quite simple. And so probably just use that invisible um, white around the edge. So you just see a very light um, little stitching detail, but that's not the thing that really takes the attention. 
So that's the plan and we can come back and I can just show you what I mean by that stitching. But let's um, take a, a flip through the dictionary of stitches. And again, let me just make sure that I'm going to stay, stay on frame. So starting with our letter A, and so in this letter A, I actually used all the stitches that we'd learnt in the letter A, including some of my arch nemesis um, stitches. Um, so did I use the I? Algerian I. Oh no, I did down there. Yep. So I knew running stitch. I absolutely adored as a stitch. I'm wondering if I can bring you a smidge down and we can still see. There we go. Um, Algerian Eye, Antique, Antwerp Edge, Armenian Edge, Arrowhead. And so I was using lots of um, sample fabrics that I got from the reverse art truck. That's from an old shirt that I used to travel all over the place with. Um, so that was our A's and then on to the B's and I happened to be doing the monogram prompt for Roxy's Journal of Stitchery at the time. So I did the B as a very decorative B um, using quite a fancy flouncy fabric. And so yeah, I've got the choice with my letters. I don't all have to do them using the same stitches. And as I say, some of them I've still got to come back and do. So I can do either simple things or um, pick out some fun letters to, to stitch just with a regular regular stitch. Um, I did do this using um, backstitch and using my version of backstitch. So that's why it does kind of fit for the, the bees. Um, so yeah, backstitch was interesting. There's three different um, versions of it basket weave that was a lot of fun and sometimes I put little other images on as well to um, have a bit of fun and I was often using my beautiful razzle threads from Sue Spargo they can be a bit difficult to handle but I just love the love the effect that they give then we have a whole lot of versions of blanket stitch kind of amazing to think that these are all versions of blanket stitch including the German knotted blanket stitch which many of us loved and I do love this honeycomb effect as well and then we have a braid this one's quite difficult quite sort of loopy um, and we have bullion knots just amazing what you can do yeah with knots I do love knots um, all the different types of flowers little teddy bear I know that was an arch nemesis for a few folks I had someone messaging me saying my teddy bear doesn't look like a teddy bear but yeah love the sunflower love these these tendrils I think I'll probably be using some more of these in my my texture work I'll have to remember to get those Sue Spargo threads out as well um, and then we've got buttonhole and again just so many different variations including um, actual well not actual buttonholes because they don't have a button in them um, I'll probably I think I might just need to sew some nice little small I might use my little uh, mother of pearl buttons and put those on this page then I'll need to do my C page so I've just written with my friction marker to remind myself that I've got to do a C header page there then we're on to cast on and these amazing cast on flowers it's it's incredible some of these things I've actually sort of almost forgotten I'm um, doing it it's actually really nice to look at it and have have the reminder and then chain including a variety of different chain stitch roses including one that I um, innovated and did with did with lace and then we've got knots so we've got Chinese knot which I've never done before and colonial knot which tends to be one that I don't do I always tend to do French knots over um, colonial knots so it's nice to yeah learn the different ways um, and then coral stitch which actually I should keep in mind again when I'm doing my little texture projects let me just have a sip of tea and then we had some combination stitches and I just love this little um, flower even the little detailing that you put in with um, thread on it and again this little cherry blossom and again and a combination stitch um, ribbon rose although it's a bit more angular isn't it and then couching really love this little collection here um, different forms of lattice um, couching work and couching 
um, to create a leaf shape and yeah lots of fun doing the writing as well where I could I used the stitch itself to do the writing sometimes it was just back stitch that I did in the center like Cretan stitch um, didn't really suit itself to doing the writing with it um, but then I did the different different versions and different colors cross stitch I've just got pinned in because I've actually only just tonight um, finished there was one missing heart that I needed to do and I just love that I used um, hessian which wasn't what the book recommended um, it recommended using an even Ada fabric but um, it's worked out incredibly well I need to actually do some more cross stitch on on hessian a Travis hair um, crow's foot so just some really interesting things again that I'd never heard of before I did the dictionary of stitches cut work which is actually cut out which is pretty cool pretty scary doing as well and then we're on to the D so I'll need to do my D page got Danish stitch detached chain drizzle stitch some of them have flattened down because I've had them again this is a great one for texture pieces and then onto E, so eyelet. So yeah, really interesting learning to do all the different um, forms of eyelets. Mine probably aren't, aren't perfection. A tailor would probably turn their nose up at them, but um, it was, yeah, it was good to, good to have a go. Ermine stitch. So these little ones are ermines. And then we've got letter F. And we're on to faggoting, which is a really interesting double, sort of where you've got two separate edges and it brings them together. Feather, again, great for texture pieces, great for nature pieces. And just really interesting, all the different versions of feather. Um, fishbone. Fly stitch. And again, just the different things you can, can create with it, from a leaf to little flowers. These are some of the things that will make the book a bit bulky, as you can see, it's sort of sitting out in some spots, but that's okay. We've got folded ribbon rose, roses, um, and then this lovely one as well, including with little baubles in the centre. Four-legged knot, so another type of knot, French knot, which I mentioned, and we've done that with ribbon um, as well. So yeah, there was a fair bit of ribbon embroidery sort of dispersed through the dictionary. Um, letter G which I'll do Giord's knot or what's this other one what's it called the little um, tough tufts can't remember what else it's known as um, glove stitch and a special shout out to Linda Harrington who did um, a actual glove um, a stitched in glove stitch which is fabulous then we've got grab stitch and some little ribbon um, flowers with the grab stitch coming down from them. Granitos knot. Um, makes a really lovely little knot actually. That's another one I need to revisit. Um, hem stitch. And again, I'll include a link. I've got a whole playlist that has all 171 videos. Um, so even if you wanted to look at a particular stitch or if you do want to gradually work your way through it, um, you'd be most, most welcome. Um, so hem just yeah really lovely to kind of find some of these old techniques where they've done that you see them on the embroideries and the stitcheries including this one where you're gathering up little um, bits of the um, the thread so you're actually pulling out some threads across here and then you're actually working with the threads that are left running down so here you're creating this little cross pattern and here you're creating little gathered like little curtain gathered sections almost I must admit some of them I looked at and thought oh am I going to be able to do that but no I I persevered I got through the book and I did every single stitch plus the others that were were suggested herringbone holbein sometimes I just had fun made a castle this holbein's really one where you get exactly the same design on the back as you have on the the front and then letter L laid work so I did my laid work egg and then I thought it'd be fun to put an egg on laid puns um, lazy daisy again different um, things you can create with it long and short stitch a little flower loop and so again we were doing lots with um, ribbon embroidery again they've got a bit flashed out but that's okay 
needle weaving again great for creating texture so that's another one for me to revisit um, net now I know Annie Annie Claxton who I do need to give a special shout out to because she's working her way um, through the um, dictionary of stitches and she's creating her amazing um, own version inspired by and using um, this incredible vintage and antique batch of threads that she got and other bits and pieces um, from Ms Cheatham um, and yeah it's just looking incredible she started it recently and I'm just so looking forward to where she takes it her pages are more like I guess scrapbooked pages and I just absolutely adore her take on it um, so I kind of feel okay that I'm not uh, originally I was thinking I'd put all these laces and other things with it but I kind of like now we've got um, yeah, two wonderfully different versions of a way that you can create your own dictionary of, of stitches or your own book of stitches um, so check out Annie I'll include a link to her and her I think she's created a playlist for it or otherwise I'll include a link to her for first video and you can um, follow follow from there and some others have recently started. I think Candice, you are, and Bayesh. I don't know if I'm saying your name right. Um, you've also been working your way through um, the Dictionary of Stitches. Um, so needle weaving, net. We've got outline. Um, oyster. And then letter P. So, yeah, I'll just be putting a small little N and O up there. Um, a bigger letter P. So Pelestrina, Pin, Pistol and Plume. And then we're on to the letter R. And we've got Raised Cup, various versions of that. Ribbon. There's Ribbon, Roads. That's an amazing one where you work your way around and you get this sort of raised, um, twisted pattern running. So yeah, I thought it was fun to do a, a shape running as well. Then we've got our letter S, and we've got satin stitch, we've got scroll stitch, seed stitch, which I did on one of my um, transfers of a printed paper image onto fabric. I just did my little seed stitches, and it was interesting because seed stitch I've always thought was a single stitch, but in um, the book it's actually multiple stitches in the one place shadow work um, this one almost needs to have um, sort of light shining through it to fully get the effect particularly some of the later ones oh no actually it was this no it was this one wasn't it yeah but that's okay I could always not stitch it down at the bottom but I think it's okay so um, and then sheaf shisha where you're actually holding i'm in this case i didn't have one of those mirror pieces but holding a button in place i have actually seen someone um, said that they'd seen someone using old bits of cd as the shisha mirror so that's an interesting idea um smokers sm sorry not smokers smokers <laughs> not goodness christine um spiderweb rose Split stitch, which I often use. It's a good little stitch for writing or outlining in. Um, Spratt's head. This one says star on a very glistening um, night sky fabric. Then a whole lot of lovely, I really enjoyed doing this one and on this particular fabric, the stem stitch. And then we've got straight stitch, including over a, a buttonhole, stump work and creating a blackberry complete with beads. Letter T will need to go in. Then Tate de Boeuf, so bull's head. Thorn stitch, thread painting. So cherry, twirled roses. That one looks like it's become a little bit misshapen, but that's okay. Um, wheat ear, detached wheat ear. Whipped stitch with a and um, that's actually a whipped rose as well. So again, yeah, lots of different versions of ribbon embroidery, wool um, embroidery to create a wool rose, a wound, a wound rose, woven. Again, I love this one working on a little doily and having a little, um, yeah, woven, woven basket to go with it. And finally, zigzag. So 171 videos later. 
and um, yeah, an amazing dictionary of stitches to put put together. I'm yeah, I'm really pleased. I must admit, I think it was an idea I had when I was travelling back from holidays in Melakuta, and I think I was stitching the very first um, stitch. I think I had actually started doing. That's right, I'd started doing Algerian eye because that was the first stitch in the. A to Z of stitches and then came across I knew running and so we added that into into the mix um, and so yeah it was just a germ of an idea and I wasn't sure I was going to be able to follow through with it but once the the little community was following along I couldn't let them down um, and it just became as I say just a beautiful group of people to join with of an evening um, and connect with and I think there was only the odd occasion when work or life got in the way and I couldn't couldn't do it and so I might put things off for a night or something um, but yeah we really we did continue on and I'm just so grateful for everyone from that time but just everyone that um, yeah that watches and comments um, subscribes and likes I just really enjoy the community so um, I enjoy connecting to you. I enjoy getting to know little bits about your life just through our little discussions and um, engagements. And I would like to do some more little live get-togethers as well. So let me show you how I'm going to approach the stitching down. So I will take out the pages I don't need. And then that way, if you are um, wanting to start putting your book together, it might be even something you want to start as you work on your stitches. Uh, that's how Annie is doing it, and it's probably a very wise thing to do. Um, so I'm just going to work on a single sheet at a time. So I've folded it, folded it out, and I can come through from the back because that's all going to have something else sitting over the top of it. And then I think I'm just going to sort of work around maybe this needle doesn't feel that sharp I'm going to switch over to a better needle after having that beautiful sharp chenille new chenille needle the other night hopefully this might be it I'm not sure if it is though um, makes such a difference sorry I need to pick it up just so I can properly we do what I need to do. So I'm just going to work my way um, along just putting little holding stitches over where the sort of outer threads are just to hold that last row of, of thread in place. In fact I think I've got one little last row of thread that's trying to come off so I might even remove that because it's not being caught with the threads there. So I'll just take that one, take that one off, and then I'll continue on my way. And as I say, because the back of this um, page will get enclosed by the other page, I don't need to worry what the back looks like. I just want to do nice little, almost invisible stitches on the front, but just enough to hold this piece, piece well. And so this will be a bit of a, a labour of love to get it stitched down. I'll probably try and do maybe one set of pages a day or something. It might take me longer. It might be just something I take travelling travelling in the car with me because it'll be a good little car project to have because it's not sort of super precise stitching. It will have all, everything I need. All I'll need is my thread and a needle. So I'll probably yeah put little sections of this in little project bag and have it ready to grab when we're heading out the door somewhere for a day trip. It's my birthday this weekend actually so we're going to be going to Phillip Island for the day on Sunday um, for a beautiful lunch at a winery or vineyard um, and brewery there. Um, so that will be beautiful. And that will be a bit of a drive to get down there so yeah perfect little project to, to work on. Just checking that you could still see, um, so I won't bore you too much um, with that. But um, I would then, I think, when I've got it, got all the pieces stitched down, um, and obviously once I put my header page on, I would then be doing a running stitch um, around these um, edges, so that, um, and that would be once it's all folded over. Let me just show you in a moment what I mean. 
So let's say I have actually um, stitched all around it, even though I haven't. Um, so if I've stitched all of the pieces down, everything's um, done that needs to be done. Um, what I would then be doing is stitching along here, along here, along here, along here and along here with a running stitch um, so that it just holds the pages flat against each other and just positions them where they where they need to be. I'm not at all worried that in some cases um, my pages don't go right to the center because um, yeah it's not going if I do a nice little running stitch down here they're just going to sit sit flat on it and I don't think it's going to get too much wear in the center anyway because it's going to have the other pages um, sort of yeah sitting sitting with it. So that is my dictionary of stitches and I hope you've enjoyed having a look at it. I hope you might be inspired to either try a single new stitch or possibly um, have a go and do the dictionary of stitches. It is a very good feeling when you can say yep I've, um, I've mastered all of these. Some of these I will need to refresh myself on how to do them but a lot of them then did become part of my my general repertoire. I've definitely done the Ainu running stitch, the German knotted stitch, a whole lot of the stitches I've done um, time and time again since. So thanks for watching. I won't keep it too long and I'll see you again soon. Bye everyone.